Hi there, so before we get too deep into this video, I want to make a little bit of a disclaimer about my thoughts on most personality quizzes or things very similar to this. Most of the time, I don't really agree. Like, whenever I meet someone that's really into horoscopes, it kind of freaks me out a bit because I'm like, why? Maybe that's because of the, like, the logical math side of me that's kind of very cynical about that thing because I'm like, why do you think that my behavior would have been caused due to the month I was born. There's zero percent science in that, like zero. I, in that regard, I cannot respect it. I cannot understand. And I think it's fun to think about if you're someone that's like, oh, you know, it's cool being like, oh, I'm a Virgo, this is how I am. That's all right, that's fine. But if you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he did that classic Capricorn, I'm like, Unless that's ironic, I don't know what you're doing. Mostly because I know like when you read the newspaper and it says like what your star sign means, they're basically just cold readings. Everyone is essentially the same. You can agree with all of them. Now I can say that and you'll go, no, but this one is the most me. Like I said, that's fine. As long as it's fun for you, I don't really care. Do what you want to do. Now, here I go. I'm going to just poo-poo uh, on this, and then I'm going to talk about another one and be like, now this one. Uh, now, obviously, I'm not fully invested in this one. I just think it's an interesting concept as well. This is the Enneagram, if you've never heard of it. The Enneagram was developed by some guy somewhere. That's all the information I'm going to give you about that. <laughs> the essential premise of the Enneagram is that there are nine distinct personality types and human beings will always fall within one of these nine with their prime motivations being distinct. What I like about this one a lot is that even though you might feel like, ooh, this number kind of suits me, but this one does as well a little bit, you will slightly feel, at least most people I know, that you do have one prime motivator where you're like, but this is still my biggest motivation. Like this is the one that suits me the most. And then when you read more about it, you're like, ah, oh, you know what, that does make sense for me. Now there's a lot of websites out there that offer to give you an Enneagram test. There are ones that you can pay for if you just have money that you're like, I don't know, I could burn it or I could spend it on an Enneagram test, or you could just take a free one. Okay, there's long ones and there's short ones. Today I'm gonna be taking a short one because your boy doesn't need that watch time that bad, right? I value your time. The long one, if you wanna take it, has much more in-depth questions with like much more uh, difficult, like, ooh, what would you do in this situation? You're like, I don't know. Well, pick an answer. It, it's probably a better detailed one, but I think I am I think I know what I'm gonna be sorted into for the Enneagram, so I'm gonna go for the quick one. Now, before we get into the quiz, I think it's a good idea to go over the possible results that I can have. Those are the numbers from one to nine, the personality traits. The number one is the reformer. The reformer is someone whose like prime motivation is like integrity, having that integrity in their life. Ones have a very strong sense of right and wrong, and they would hate to be corrupt. Like their prime motivation is just making sure they are a true person with a lot of integrity. Integrity. And obviously if you're watching this, you're like, not Evan. Did you see that video he made three weeks ago? I actually don't know what I made. I was proud of it. So just touch it up, man. I'm proud of it. But no, I don't feel like I'm a one either. Now when it comes to the next one, I've had a couple friends sort me into this one so much that they're like, oh, Evan, that's such a two thing of you to do. And I say, excuse me, what did you say to me? And they're like, that's a pun. I'm like, yeah. Let me have this. Anyway, number two is the helper. The helper is someone whose prime motivation is to be loved. And a two's basic fear is being unwanted or unworthy of being loved. That one, I feel like might also be me. Like I've had people sort me to this and I feel like, you know, it does suit me. I, I am very much like The that. positives of the two are they can be very friendly and people pleasing and a lot of people may enjoy their presence because they're always very nice. However, on a negative day, a two can be doing things not just to be nice, but for the reciprocation. So instead of just being nice to you because I like you, I'm being nice to you because I want that reciprocation so much because my fear of being unloved or unwanted and my desire is to be loved. So that's an interesting concept when it comes to the two. The three is the achiever, the one that wants to feel valuable and worthwhile. At the end of the day, they want to like leave a legacy behind. They want to be remembered and to have things that they've made and be successful. If you think of a three, you think success, that drive for success. I know a lot of people with that personality type and I gotta say they're very ethereal. Ethereal, three, it works. Okay, that's a pretty classy pun. If you're waiting to hear what the next one is, what are you waiting for? I'm getting to it, it's four, the individualist. This is the person that they just want to feel special. They want to be unique and individualistic in everything they so do. So a four's basic fear is insignificance and they will strive to avoid that at all costs. At their best, they can be very creative and can make a whole name for themselves and feel very unique and special. At their worst though, fours can be way too focused on their self image and that can hurt them overall. The five is the investigator. This is the type of person that goes well out of the way to get new information. They're very curious people and if they want to try and come to a conclusion, they will 
will research everything they can about the situation before making the decision. A five's basic desire is to be capable and competent, whereas their basic fear is to be useless. So a five's main goal there is to provide use and use their brain for good, basically. If the sorting hat sorted people into Enneagrams, I believe most Ravenclaws would probably suit themselves into five. Next up is a six. The six is the loyalist. Their basic desire is security and support, and they will be striving for that at all times. Like I said, even though you might be like, oh, well, everyone really wants security. Why would this be a unique thing? Yes, but this person, whoever gets sorted into a six, that is their main motivator. Like no matter what else is going on, yes, everyone wants to be loved. Everyone wants to maybe have control of a situation and likes no information, but this person, the six, their prime motivation is that stability. They want to be sure they are safe at all times. Sixes are very hardworking individuals and they are the type of person that will gladly ask for directions because that will just help them out in the end and increase their level of security. Their basic fear is not having that support though and feeling like they're alone. The seven is the enthusiast. Often very playful and spontaneous. Sometimes they can be described as scattered because they have so many different things they're trying to do at the same time and they're just trying to have a good time really. A seven's basic desire is to feel satisfied whereas their fear is being deprived. When you think about people that are champions of freedom and stuff, the seven really comes on strong there because their number one thing is like freedom. They want the, to be free to do anything they want basically. Seven is one of those numbers where I do feel like I hypothetically could be sorted into only because I do fit many of its characteristics. I am a bit scattered. I am doing too many things at the same time and I always like lose track of whatever I'm doing. And a lot of times I do try and do too much and try and maximize my levels of happiness. So if I get sorted into that, I wouldn't really be too surprised. But there are some where I'm like, eh, that's not very seven. I'm not very seven in that regard. Next up is eight, the challenger. This is a very dominating personality type. This person wants to be in control of their lives at all times. They're definitely not someone that believes in horoscopes or uh, I don't even know if an eight would believe in predestination or any type of religious thing because they are so reliant on themselves. An eight's basic fear would be to have someone else in any way controlling their life. Like they need to be in full control at all times. Oftentimes eights can come off as confrontational and intimidating because they're so involved with dominating their own lives. This often spills over into others. And lastly is the nine, the peacemaker. The one whose main desire in life is to make sure there is no confrontation and they have inner peace within themselves. This is a very rare personality type, at least in my friend groups. I don't know many people that would consider themselves nines. I mean, I definitely exemplify some of these bits. Like I hate confrontation and in situations like that, I will try and defuse in any way I can. However, I don't have much inner peace. I don't think that's the type of person I am. I don't meditate as much as the next guy. I don't think that out of all the basic desires there are in the world, mine would be inner peace. That's definitely not mine. Now, originally in this video, I had planned on taking the test on camera, as you can see from the video behind me. However, in the edit, I figured it wasn't really the most interesting or engaging content. I mean, the only interesting question was, are you indecisive or decisive? It is funny, if you're really indecisive, you can't really choose, but besides that, wasn't the most interesting. So, instead of doing that, because I value your time, like I said, I don't think the content was that interesting, I decided to reach out to my friend and local Enneagram expert, Dodie, to talk about my results with her and what she thinks of the Enneagram. Let's go to her house. Alright, Dodie, so I showed you my results. I got a 7 on the quick test. Do you think I'm a 7? Well, Evan, it depends. I can't tell you that. Do you think you're a seven? I definitely think I have seven qualities. Yeah, so you can take an Enneagram test online, and it actually said specifically on the answer to the test, this is just an indicator, but it doesn't actually mean what you are. What you are is the one that, if you research all of them, you find your prime motivator to be the strongest for. Yeah, so. yeah. It, like, tests can't tell you who you are. You have to find out. Describe yourself at your most unhealthy. At my most unhealthy, I could just think of being angry. Interesting. I don't get angry much, but the the time I'd imagine myself being most unhealthy is if I was angry. If you're taking on the unhealthy qualities of being an eight, that means you're being frustrated because of the lack of control. Yes. Okay, yeah. describe yourself that you're healthier. In social interactions, people appreciate my presence, and I'm contributing, and uh, if I leave the social engagement, I'll go, I left a good impression, everything was fine, and uh, I didn't say anything too stupid. Okay, well that could be a full thing, because you're trying to be likeable. And that's a very four trait. You want to be someone who is, has a significant identity and some, but a good one. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I do get the significant identity bit of a four only because, like, for instance, I went to my friend's birthday party the other day and four or five people there were taller than me and I felt really uncomfortable and, I like, I didn't belong anymore. Mm -hmm. it, like, usually it's like, oh, Evan, he's that tall guy. I was no longer the tall guy. There was so many other taller people, so I didn't know who I was. I almost lost my place, mm -hmm. and it was very... I got thrown off confidence. I got thrown off of everything. It was like, who am I right now? If I'm around someone that's, like, ultimately so much funnier than me, it also throws me off, and I quiet. 
and I don't know what to say because usually it's like, I'm a funny person. We're around someone else, I'm like, oh, God, nope, they're the funny person. I'm a sh right. I'm no one. If we were to link that back to being a two, that would mean you aren't needed. You aren't needed as the tall guy. Yeah, I wouldn't. Needed <laughs> I'm the... needed as the tall guy. You know, you I need don't that, know. You need that thing up there? Like, got where it. is my place in this situation? Right, Odie's a four. I'm a four. And I know I'm a four because I, I don't know, it just, it fits so well with me. I just figure out that everything I do boils down to me needing <laughs> this significant identity or trying to be special or like thinking I'm different. As a four, in my health, I move to a one. So I become, I'm, and I've noticed that me at my healthiest is usually me and my work. I become very like principled, uh, but in a good way and perfectionistic and like, let's make this work, let's get this mm -hmm. right. In my unhealthiest stage, which tends to be in me, uh, me in relationships, I tend to take on the unhealthy traits of a two, become very needy. All in all, if you take someone and ask them a bunch of questions and they answer in a similar way, you'll get to find out what their basic need is anyway, regardless of whether the yeah, Instagram is true point. or not. If anything, it just gets people talking about themselves and what they need and what they like, and then you kind of figure out who they are anyway. So it's just a fun way. It could all be bullshit, but I mean, people who tend to be controlling tend to move in a certain direction in stress and in health anyway. And someone just ages ago, like, researched that and found, found this out. So it's fun. It's not yeah. necessarily fake, it's not necessarily real, but it's it's fun to think about and it's useful to kind of talk about other people's motivations and yeah. where they're going. And learn about yourself as well. Yeah. So I'm happy to be a two, or if for some reason I am a seven, like I said, I do feel more two than seven, but I'm okay with either one and you're happy for. Yeah. If you're happy for this video, then, you know, do what you do with videos. If you liked it. <laughs> well, that was tenuous. That was a tenuous <laughs> off. Uh, there's only nine in the Enneagram, not ten. But thanks for watching, everyone. I hope I will see you next week for a special sketchy video with my boy Luke. I'll see you next week. Bye bye. There we go. We did it. Thanks. <laughs> she fell back. <laughs> I've stopped falling back after I've got it back on my chair. Oh. I'll just delete. Oh, I have your memory card, by the way. I know you've probably been looking for it. You, you accidentally let me borrow it without asking.